Allensworth, California, a small town with an unusual past nestled in a remote, dusty corner of the San Joaquin Valley. In 2006, a local farmer's plan to install two large dairy farms across the road from Allensworth led to national attention and controversy. Clary County Farm Bureau would like to go on record uh, in support of this special use permit uh, for the Echigari Dairies. Allensworth is a unique asset in the history of California and Tulare County. Allowing a dairy to operate as contemplated is a serious mistake. Allensworth started out as an all-black town nearly a hundred years ago. It was the only town in California intentionally founded and governed by African Americans. My family moved to Allensworth in 1938. And I was just a little kid, eight, nine years old. The thing that impressed me most about Allensworth was everyone here was black, just all black people. The, the stores had black people working in the stores, actually owning the stores. I had never seen black people do anything before other than pick cotton or work in the fields. When we got here in Allensworth and here were black people, the, the policeman was black. The judge of the town was black. African Americans originally came westward for the same reasons as others. The promise of freedom and wealth. But the reality did not live up to the dream, and they continued to encounter racism, with discrimination in housing, education, and employment. While it was unique in California, Allensworth was one of many all-black towns in the West. They were towns like Bowley in Oklahoma, Nicodemus and Singleton in Kansas. Colonel Allensworth was the highest ranked uh, African-American military official in the world during his day. Allensworth said, we're going to fight racism. That's our sole purpose for existing. Race relations are the biggest problem facing the nation. We're going to resolve it. The way we're going to resolve it, we're going to educate public opinion, and then that way we'll change the law. A large number of our fellow countrymen have been taught for generations that the Negro is incapable of the highest development of citizenship. This they believe and will continue to think until we show them they are mistaken. Colonel Allen Allensworth, a retired Army chaplain, settled in Los Angeles in 1906. He had been born a slave in Kentucky, but eventually escaped and served in the Union Navy during the Civil War. He was a great believer in black self-help and lectured throughout the United States. In 1908, together with four other African-American men, Colonel Allensworth devised a plan to acquire land to start an all-black settlement. The town was to serve as a living example of what African-Americans could achieve if they were free of racial discrimination. By August of 1909, 35 families had moved to the new town site, which was conveniently located in the middle of nowhere. Many of them came from areas that of lynching, uh, rioting, segregating practices, in every area, labor, education, community, not wanted, do not answer, go to the back door. It was a moral and intellectual uh, capital of, for black people throughout the entire state. Uh, people would come to Allensworth from Northern and Southern California every weekend the train would bring them in by the train loads. This was in 1911, 12, 13, 14, 15, along when Ellsworth was in his heyday. Papa was in his 60th year and Mama in her 50s when they decided to turn aside from city life and become farmers. We found much in the colony to engage our interest. There were eight public buildings to look into we soon wore a beaten path to the library. 
Allensworth had two grocery stores. Mr. Heinzman's was on the corner lot across the road from the Santa Fe Railroad. The Singleton store was diagonally across the road from the hotel. Josephine Hackett. When I started the school, and I actually saw, had a black school teacher, and she walked up to me and hugged me the first time I came into the classroom. She said, uh, will you promise me something? I said, I'll promise you anything. She said, please learn something every day you come to school. And it was the first time I'd ever realized that school was a place that uh, a person actually went to learn something other than how to fight and throw rocks and take the name calling, the insults and all that kind of stuff. Being a migrant from a migrant farm worker family, it's quite often I was the only black kid in the little schools that I went to. The teacher would even refer to me sometimes using the big N word. It was just a horrible situation. Coming to Allensworth was like coming from hell and falling right into paradise. I needed this so badly. Hints of trouble began in Allensworth as early as 1910, when an inadequate water system and increased demand by area farmers made once plentiful water scarce. Then, in 1914, Colonel Allensworth was run down by a motorcycle as he crossed a street in Monrovia, California. That same year, the railroad depot which provided a vital commercial link, was moved six miles west of Allensworth to the nearby all-white town of Alpa. And they killed that business in Allensworth in just a, a year. The, 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 the freight business in Allensworth had been making four or $5,000 a month. had dropped down to $30 a month. They closed the, they closed the stop off altogether. The pioneers died. Uh, the children, after graduating, uh, there was not a high school which they tried to establish, and when they finished high school elsewhere, they did not return. We left Allensworth, that was in 1940. A lot of people were still here, and they just hung on, hung on, hung on. But when the war started, and 1941 started, and jobs started to open up in the different cities, that's when, the, that's when everyone left. That was the last great days of Allensworth. In its declining years, through the 1970s, Allensworth suffered poverty, isolation, and scarce water. I mean, there wasn't a single tree here where we were sitting under, nothing. It was just brush, dry brush. Of course, without no water, what would grow here? California recognized the historical significance of Allensworth in 1976 and established the state park. Since that time, new families have moved in next door to the township of Allensworth, some drawn by the history. Okay, this is the Allensworth Cemetery. Some of the pioneers are buried here. Where you see these crosses or these markings is where someone is buried. It's 
Some of these sticks look weak, but they're pretty strong because they're so deep into the ground. I had no idea such a place existed. And I just fell in love with it and I wanted to become part of. And that's how I ended up in Allensworth. <laughs> It's home, and, and uh, I love it. My dad, he had 16 kids, him, him, him and my mom, and uh, he was looking for a place for all of us to stay where all of us fit, so this would be it. It has changed a lot from when I first came here 30 years ago. Today, Allensworth is about 85, 90% Hispanic and 10% Black. Most of the people in the community today are field workers. Aquí en el pueblito son dos años, pero hacia afuera es un poquito nada más, um, como 14 años, 14, 15 años. Uh, no, pues no más quizás que ya estoy acostumbrada como a vivir aquí donde está como muy pacífico, muy solo. In Tulare County, there is an applicant for two mega dairies to come in a mile and a half away from Allensworth. Yeah, our main concern is, is, is the quantity of shit, piss, flies, smell, everything associated with the dairy. Uh, I mean, by sheer numbers, I mean, if, you, if one cow does it, of course, two does it twice that much, and we're talking thousands, it's a lot of shit. I don't care what they do to it, it's gonna smell. You know, it's all there is to it. I don't think anyone would want to visit a state historic park for a barbecue or to spend the day in the park thinking you're gonna enjoy the wide open spaces only to be turned off by thousands of cattle. Each one of those buildings is a monument to the African American experience life and style, ability, education, skill, monument. It's a matter of contamination and contamination of the air as contaminating the water. You can't spend a nickel in Allensworth right now. There's not even a soda pop machine, and there's no business at all in this town. I would like to see Allensworth grow, but in a positive way. But the only thing that people have wanted to put off on us was like the turkey ranch, which would have been the full length of Allensworth. We had to fight that. The sludge system, uh, no. Uh, now the dairy, we want to see Allensworth grow, but please give us a break. Why do you only want to put something that is smelly and undesirable in our community? Well, one thing that has happened is that this dairy proposal has forced the African-American and the Mexican-American communities, especially the political activists and those of us that want to see things bettered, it's forced us to begin to 
take a hardcore look at the different possibilities. And we're starting to work together right now. We're working together right now better than we ever have worked together before. The Board of Supervisors for the Tulare County is going to make a decision of whether they will approve or not approve uh, these dairies. And it's two of them, two dairies that are next to each other. This is, is not just a, a local problem, just about the citizens here in Allensworth or the yeah. state of Allensworth. People all over this country should be up in arms about this, the idea that they would attempt to do something like this. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. So do you know, uh, you got any idea how many how many people they're going to go? Well, we'll find out today. Okay. Uh, us. Yeah. Uh, the Bay Area is bringing these bus loads. Well, you're going to say they're bringing, what, two buses? That's what they say. And one from L.A.? Yeah. My name is David Albers. I'm an attorney for the applicant, Mr. Sam Echigari. First of all, I wanted to note that this is a great opportunity before you today. Um, this is an area that is desperately in need of jobs, and a number of people have already testified in the public hearings that they are interested in working on these dairies. Uh, most certainly it would be a few jobs if the dairy were to come through, but at what cost? African American. Many others came forward to voice their opposition. Worried and concerned. I disagree with this dairy. One man. I have to tell you that as a supervisor, and I think I speak for all the members of this board, uh, I'm very frustrated by today. I'm frustrated because of the fact that uh, this is a process that's been going on for some time. You're looking at a stack of the EIR documents to date. Sir, the public comments have been, been closer. I'm sorry about your frustration. The people who came here came with good intent. I think you should take an opportunity to educate yourself and to look at this as, as an opportunity to be more enlightened as opposed to being frustrated. We've been frustrated for 300 years. standing on holy ground. This is where our ancestors and our, our forefathers and foreparents walked, lived, ate, cooked, <laughs> partied, had a good time. They lived. We flat don't like the fact that they put it right next to our park here. And, and uh, I say our park because that's the way we feel. It's our park. Everybody's in California or, or the nation, but we're in it too.
which place you in the responsibility that you now carry. Do it well. We are the number one dairy industry in the nation. We are the number two agricultural county in the nation. But I go back even a little further with some of you folks because uh, I see some of the grandmothers out there that uh, probably relate to okra and to uh, black-eyed peas and those things. You see, I relate to you as an okie. Well, I'm saying to you today I'm from Oklahoma. Much has been said, much testimony has been given, much emotional, testimony and thought into the words and remarks that all of these people have come before this board more than once, more than twice. That's right. I think this is three. Somehow, and I am saddened by the fact that somehow the perception is there that agriculture and dairying is disrespectful to people's culture and heritage. That's true. I don't. That's true. I don't. I don't know that it would do me any good to say that my own personal experience has been different. I am struggling to understand uh, how agriculture, the dairy industry, farming in general is disrespectful and how our opinions are swayed um, purely by emotion. That's it. Our decision making has to be based upon the facts and the information that's been presented to us. And so I appreciate where you're coming from. I understand your concerns. But I have to base my decision on the information that's been presented to me. And the information says that the problems that you all are concerned about is misguided. I will at this time entertain a motion. Vote is unanimous. I wow, am cute. so upset. I am so upset. No, what the was next said. step no, what was is, said. Is, is the legal, oh, legal part what, of it. That's all. Said. That's all. When they oh. took us from the shores of Africa, they didn't want us to have anything. Then, they had, nothing has changed. We're disappointed. We've been mistreated. We know we've been mistreated as a town and as a people. And still, we are dedicated. We're faithful to something. It might be that we have no place else to go. If we don't have any place else where we can go, why not try and make this a paradise? I am a Christian, and it said, ask and it shall be given. I've prayed about it, and I feel that we are going to be victorious. If we are not, that will only mean one thing. The fight has just begun. Well, Somebody says we lose a battle, but not the war. I think it was George Patton one time that said, uh, retreat hell, we're gonna attack in a different direction. <laughs>